the topic of the presentation. I tried to, see, uh, to check if I memorized correct. 20 tips in 20 minutes. Learn from 20 exits and 20 failures, right? right? You are very good. I hope you like uh, my video which just preceded the talk. The lady, it was me. <laughs> Yossi Vardy, uh, I'll leave you the stage. Thank you very much. It's very nice to be again on this uh, stage. Uh, last year, uh, Loic gave me the 7.30 in the morning slot, and uh, I was about the only speaker in the room. This time, he gave me the very late afternoon, but we are here. More people, it's very nice to see you. And first of all, I want to thank Loic and Geraldine again for a great conference they've put together. <laughs> they deserve better applause. Try, try a little bit better. This is Loic. Loic. No, 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 stand up and bow to the guys. I'm going to share with you some of the very happy and very sad and very embarrassing things I learned in the last 16 years. Here is Geraldine also. Why don't you stand up and bow to the people? Please stand up. You don't have any, any idea how hard they are working in order to make you uh, happy with this conference. So thank you again, and I'm saying it not only because I mean it, but also because I want to be invited next year. <laughs> and you have to help me in that, you have to applaud, etc. so they will be impressed. In the last 16 years, I was involved in 80 or so startup, most of them in Israel. And uh, during this period, I, have, uh, I had a very nice 20 exits, which usually when I'm uh, being introduced, this is what they tell about me. But I also had very embarrassing 20 failures. And you have to understand, if you are a real entrepreneur, you have to understand that these, these things are coming together. And I want to share with you some of the studies. Tip number one what it takes in order to succeed. What is more important, knowledge and talent or luck? What do you think? Luck, right. Napoleon said that if he has to select a general uh, based on luck or professional, he's preferring uh, to select somebody with luck. And if he has to trade, he will increase the amount of luck. However, Goddess Fortuna is not distributing luck in a random way. When Goddess Fortuna knocks on your door in order to give you luck, better she doesn't find you in the men's room. Better you are ready for her. So luck comes to the people who are seeking luck by hard working. So this is very important. Another thing which is important for luck is serendipity. You can plan what to do, but sometimes circumstances take you and create for you a situation. Uh, I, I have done my biggest exit on the staircase of a hotel in Davos where I met uh, Steve Case after a talk he was giving. If I wouldn't meet him, I don't know if it would happen. So serendipity is very important, and there are ways to increase serendipity. The ways to increase serendipity is to reach out, to go to conference, to go to events, to create events, to add value. It's not enough to sit in your office with your nose into the computer. You have to try and reach out and add value to other people. If you do that, you increase your probability of uh, being successful in your endeavor. It's very true for startups. It's also true for life. Next, uh, next thing is the finance. When you try to create a startup, you have to assemble a team, you have to raise finance, and here I would like to recommend everybody to go to a wonderful site called Startup Genome, who studied thousands of startups, and they provide some insight on what works and what doesn't work. And I will uh, give you some of the results of their statistics. Number one, Usually, people say, raise the man as much money as you can in order that you will have a war chest. Is it true or not? What do you think? No. Wow. Not true. Who thinks it's uh, true? Raise your hand. One. Who thinks it's not true? Raise your hand. 
So one guy thinks it's true, about 15% think it's not true, and the rest don't understand what I'm talking about. I guess this is because of my accent. Raising too much money can be toxic, and the reason is that if you raise too much money, you tend to spend it because you want to show to your investors that you didn't raise it, just that it will stay in the bank, and you are running into too high burning rate. And then when you have very high burning rate, you are unable to, 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 to break even, and when you are not breaking even, you have a deficit, you have to go to and raise more money and more money, and you are going into vicious circle. The right strategy to succeed is to raise smaller amount in the beginning until you have proof of concept. Once you have proof of concept, you raise a little bit more money, and you are not trying with raising, with raising a big chunk of money because the probability according startup genome is going down if you are raising too much money. It may sound uh, contrary to conventional wisdom, but this is what statistic shows. Team, you have to assemble a team. What is the right size for a group of uh, entrepreneurs to start a startup? One, three. Who said one? Who said three? Who said two? Two for the first time, two for the second time. Okay, what they suggest that the, the optimal size is about three. If you do one, it's too much burden on a single person and you cannot cover all the different disciplines that you need. If you have more than three, the interest of the individual entrepreneurs is going down, and, uh, and uh, then they may lose interest. So three people will be the optimal. Next thing, you begin to develop, you raise the funds. Uh, by the way, raising funds, from whom should you raise funds? From experienced investors, from investors which tell you that they will help, from anybody, Statistics show that investors which promise to help in many times are not fulfilling their promise. So Startup Genome suggests that uh, it's impartial or doesn't make a change if your investor is experienced or not. What they say makes a lot of difference is if you can get a good mentor, a good mentor which will take an interest in what you are doing and will help you in introductions and in decisions in critical points. So mentors, serious mentors, are very important to the success of a startup. The next thing, I was told that after 20 minutes I have to get off the stage. How much time I have now? I don't know. When you are getting tired of me, just scream, go away, and I will know that. Five minutes. Five minutes. Thank you. The next, uh, the next thing is pivoting. All of you are familiar with pivoting. You start with an idea, you have a terrific idea, you wake up in the morning in the second day and you are sure that you are going to conquer the world and then after three, four, five minutes you find that nobody is using the product, you are doing a pivoting. Which means that you are throwing everything, not everything, but you are throwing the concept or you are trying to modify it. Pivoting is good for the, to increase the rate of success or not? Guys, talk up, are you sleeping? Yes. Something is wrong, either me or you. And it must be you, because I cannot be wrong. Uh, pivoting is very important. If you don't do pivoting, it means that you are not, that you are not uh, learning from the experience, but more than two pivotings usually is detrimental. So you can do once or you can do twice. If you didn't succeed in the second time, you are in a problem. Now, before we continue, I want to go back to raising funds. You are looking for funder. How you get a good funder? How you can attract the attention of a funder? What? Most of the people who are investing will tell you is that, hi, Heiko, how are you? You are good. 
Uh, most of the funders, people like myself, will tell you that they tend to fund people who are coming with some recommendation of somebody they trust. You have to understand that the psycholog psychology of the funder is that he is very unsecured, very much in doubt as to, the, as to the capability of the entrepreneurs. You need to get some assurances. The best assurance is to come with recommendation of somebody's trust. My main source of deal flow where I'm investing is that people which are coming to me with recommendations of their friends. So if you want to be successful in raising funds, try to find somebody who will introduce you to a potential funder. Sending, why this camera is moving all the time, you know? This is the robot, there is a ball under the, under the camera. So uh, just going uh, cold, cold shoulder to a funder, many times it will not succeed. So look for somebody who can make the introduction and uh, induce credibility. We'll, we'll vote, uh, vote for you. This is very, very important. Let's talk a little bit about exits. You want to do exits. There is a big debate in Israel whether early exits are good or late exits are better. When you are doing early exit, you leave some of the value on the table, but you are increasing the probability of consolidating whatever you were able to create until this point. If you are shooting for a bigger exit, usually you increase your, your uh, risk because it will take more time, you will need more funds, and uh, some people are preferring to do early exits, some people are preferring to continue and try to do bigger exit. I don't think that there is a rule, but you have to know that the more you wait, the value may go up, but so is the risk. And you have to decide where you want. There is a, not a conflict, different interest between the funders and the entrepreneurs. The entrepreneurs in many times are young people which would like to consolidate what they accomplish. The funders usually have more funds and they don't mind to take a bigger risk and to wait. The solution in order to resolve this situation is by allowing the young entrepreneurs to do some liquidation, partial liquidation event, namely to sell some of their stock and to allow them to continue and to gamble, if you want, on the rest of their stock. This will probably be the optimal, uh, the optimal solution. You have to remember when you are doing exit that you are not selling a company, your company to a company. The buyer is not Facebook or Google or uh, Twitter or whoever. The buyer is a certain person in the company. The buyer is always individual which believe in what you are doing and believe that by buying your... I have to go to leave. 30 seconds, okay, so all, everybody together, let's do it right this time. 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 15, 10, 5, 4, Three, <laughs> two, one, <laughs> zero. See you next year. Thank you, Yossi. Thank you so much.